Daniel again, this is video two of a series of three short videos in which I try to explain the mechanics of the coronavirus without mathematics. If you're interested in the mathematics, links are below to a long text and 13 videos to explain the mathematics. Okay, in this second video, I want to talk about the problem that you can monitor only the past considering the coronavirus. There's a time frame in this virus. Like, first you get infected, five days later you get sick, you might have symptoms or not, you can spread the virus now, you can be tested. Usually the test takes some time, it has to go to the lab, it has to be processed, the results have to come back. So on average, 10 days after you are infected, you might have a, a positive result. Okay, so you can monitor only the situation 10 days, from 10 days earlier. That means, for example, Usually it might not be that bad, but if the virus grows so fast, it might be very bad. Because if it's not, the curve is not flattened yet, and you have 5,000 official cases, for example, that means you had 5,000 cases 10 days ago, and the growth of 27% means that you have 11 times this amount now. So you would have 55,000 infected people now, but you know only from 5,000 people, and they only know this, that means 50,000 people walk around, spread the virus, not knowing that they are infected. And it gets actually worse because you monitor now the situation 10 days ago and 10 days in the future, actually people who are infected 10 days ago might die. That means if you um, change something in the growth, you can change it now, 10 days later you can monitor it, and even 10 more days later you will see the effect and the death toll. So if you try to, for example, stop the growth and you do not succeed, 10 days later you can measure it, and if you didn't succeed, 10 days later you will see the death toll going up. 